Yo, what's up, guys? <laughs> wow, I can't do that voice. Yo, what up, guys? It's Buku Strikes here, and here we are with a Pokemon video. Today, we're going to be talking about Skeldurge. Skeldurge is one of the three starters you can get in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, being the fire type. And it evolves, well, okay, I don't know what the first evolution is, but it evolves from a fire type to fire and ghost. Today I want to talk about how you can competitively use Skeldiurge in this meta. Now, Skeldiurge is a defensive fire type with stats that complement that in a move pool. So as you can see here, it has base 104 HP, combined with the base 100 defense, which makes it a great wall. And special defense is not that bad, 75 is respectable on its own, it's pretty mediocre. But when you combine that with its base 104 HP, it can make for a great wall. But what makes Skeldia unique from a lot of other walls is that it's also very offensively oriented. With this base 110 special attack, it can actually put out some decent enough damage. And along with that special attack, it also has Torch Song. Torch Song is its signature move, base 80 fire type move with 100% accuracy, and it has a 100% chance to raise and use a special attack by one, which is huge. And the reason why it is huge is when you combine that with its ability unaware, which ignores other Pokemon stat changes. Basically, you can't set up on Skeldy Urge. Whatever damage you're gonna do, is you're gonna do. When you combine that with the fact that it's tanky and it has Torch Song, which always raises special attack, you have a very, very dangerous defensive mod that when you leave it unchecked, it can actually end games pretty fast if you don't like take care of it right away. Now, it's Fire and Ghost, which is a decent defensive typing. It's got some good amenities to fight, not fire, fighting, and normal, along with a lot of great resistances such as Bug, Grass, Fairy, Steel, and, and Ice, and a few more probably, and Poison, and Steel. Basically, Fire and Ghost, actually, it's a great defensive typing, actually. Scale the Urge. All of its, the way Game Freak designed this mod, all of its parameters perfectly complement each other. It is a move that boosts its special attack guaranteed, along with a great defensive move pool with moves such as Slack Off, Will O Wisp, and Yawn. It also has access to, as I said before, Unaware, and it's got great stats that perfectly complement it. Now, how you want to build Skeldirge? Now, the only thing with Skeldirge, Skeldirge, I don't know how you pronounce it. Skeldurge is that what you see, once you see a Skeldurge on an enemy team or your team, everyone knows a set's gonna run. I firmly believe that Skeldurge has only one set that you could sort of play around with, but it's got one set, and that is Willowis, Hex, Torch Song, and Slack Off. Willowis, because you want to spread burns, burn is, burning opposing mod is just very it's beneficial, the six percent chip as well as having their attack, and that complements with Hex, which doubles its power if the target is status, so it goes from 65 to 130. Torch Song, because you literally, you have to run this move, like, just, you don't really have a choice. Like, this is what makes Skeldurge, Skeldurge. Like, this is the move that makes people, gets people scared when they see this one. And lastly, you have Slack Off, because in order to keep doing what you do with these three moves, you gotta heal it off every turn, so Slack Off greatly complements the set. And as for your ability, I mean, you have Blaze and you have Underwear. Don't run Blaze. Don't do it. It's not good. Don't do it. Just run Underwear. You always run Underwear. No contest. As for items, you can switch between Heavy Duty Boots and Leftovers. And it really just depends on your team's needs. If you your team already has great hazard support, then I would say, yeah, run Leftovers. The 6% healing each turn is very beneficial, especially when you can are able to avoid 2 hit KOs and turn into 3 hit KOs. Having the leftovers passive recovery each turn is very good. However, if your team is lacking in hazard support, aka you don't have defog or rapid spin or the other moves that they keep introducing, then I would definitely go with heavy duty boots so that whenever you switch in, you don't take any hazard damage from stealth rock because that is one of Skeldurge's weaknesses is that it is weak to stealth rock. So we'll take that 25% damage aka a quarter of its health and also it's also weak to toxic spikes and i don't know game freak put a lot of toxic spikes users in this game so you really do have to watch out for 
getting this mod poisoned. Because if this mod gets poisoned, it's not going to be able to roll. And if it gets badly poisoned, it lights out. This mod is just useless, so you definitely do not want to get a poison. Paralyze, it's fine. Sleep is cool. Poison, it's a death sentence for this mod. Don't let it get poisoned, so heavy duty boots really does alleviate having to be affected by toxic spikes. And it also helps to get spikes as well. The rack up, especially if you have to switch in to take a move, the damage rack up from rocks and spikes, it does add up. And it really does make scale dirge's job harder. So heavy duty boots, if your team does not have good hazard control, otherwise stick with leftovers. As for the Terra type, because it's a defensive mod, what I find with Terra Astralizing so far, it's only been one day, so everything's take everything with a grain of salt. But what I find with Terrestrializing is that if you're a defensive mod, you generally just want to stick with your two, especially if you're a duo type, you want to stick with your two two types you already have, which would be Ghost and Fire. I don't see the much use in trying to experiment outside. Like I would say, if anything, you could try Trash. Oh, whoops. You could try to Terrestrialize in a Dark type, and I say that because by turning into a Dark type, you do get rid of your Ghost and Dark weakness. But, to be honest, it doesn't really help you all, much, all that much, especially because, I mean, we're going to go further into, like, moves you could potentially run, but to be honest, the only other move I could think of that actually has viability is Yawn. And if you're going to run Yawn, then, yeah, I mean, you're not spreading status as a will of this, so you might as well just run Yawn. But, like, most of his other moves, like, the opportunity cost is just, it's not worth it, like, I guess you could run Nightshade, but I mean, especially because Torch Song is giving you that boost, why not just run a special attack and ghost move like Hex to get the boost from the special attack? So I really don't see. You can look at this other move. It's not that they're bad, it's just Slack Off, you have to run Slack Off. Like, it's a slow defensive mod, you have to run this. Torch Song, like, it, come on, you get a special attack each time you use it. I don't see what else you would run. So these two moves guarantee. Now you need a stat, like, his coverage is actually pretty bad, that's probably another weakness as well, his coverage is pretty bad, like he has, <laughs> brother, he has, <laughs> his earth power, and you know what, I would say if Heatran was in this game, definitely run earth power, but there's no Heatran, so you don't need earth power, so you don't need coverage for this guy, just stick with your two stabs, Hex, Torch Song, if you want to be freaky, you can run Terra, Terra Blast Ghost, but that's pushing it. I would just stick with Hex. And Yawn or will o -Wisp. Most people go will o -Wisp. Yawn is cool too, it definitely does throw people off guard. And might I add, running Yawn lets you win, especially what might happen is that you might run into Skeldirge mirror matches, and especially if you don't have any like weird EV spreads, you definitely want to run. Yawn would catch them off guard, and they'd be forced to either switch or take to sleep, and then have their wall commission for a few, out of commission for a few turns. So Yawn's definitely an option. Now, in terms of EV spreads, what I would recommend, and really, it's just pretty simple. You just run max HP, and you either go max defense or max special defense. Now, what you need to run is kind of preference, but it's also strategical. Most people would run max defense because his defense, its defense is his higher stat, which makes sense. But it almost feels sometimes too much, especially because if you have will o -Wisp and you burn them, now what? Their attack is halved and you have max defense. It's kind of overkill sometimes. So you have the option to also run max special defense. And that's a great compliment when you factor in that if you burn the attacker, now they they you really they really can't touch you even like even without defense investments your HP is so high they can't really touch you and especially with the max special defense it allows you to take more hits be than you normally could because without max bedef you can take a special a special attack and hit but especially if it's super effective you're only taking one and that hurts a lot but with max special defense you can take a lot more like a lot more so consider that. If you're gonna run the Willowa set, if you're running Yawn, just run Max. If you're gonna run Yawn, just run Max Defense because you don't have any burns to 
support you. So I will just run back to defense if they run yellow. Otherwise, it's pretty flexible with the defense or special defense. Don't bother investing special attack, it's just not worth to your defensive mod, just leave it alone. Speed, don't bother. I mean, you could do something like this, especially if you want to run, if you want to win the scale to your mirror matches, you can just bring your speed up a little so that you don't lose the mirror matches. Now, in terms of teammates, now, Skeldier definitely benefits from one, teammates that can spread status, and two, teammates that can help cover his weaknesses because he is weak to ground, rock, dark, ghost, and probably one more, or um, water. So, great teammates that I would suggest to pair Skeldier with Toxapex. Toxapex is a water and poison type, so he covers. Toxapex covers the fact that Skeldier is weak to <laughs> water. Not so much the other weaknesses, but actually, Skeldirge actually supports Toxapex more because... Do they? I don't know. But the main point about Toxapex is that you can run these poison moves to help spread poison so that Skeldirge has could do more damage with X. You just have to be careful that you don't accidentally burn poison in attacking when it's a burn. But I would say, yeah, Pex is a great... And I also recommend a Grass type as well. Fire, Water, Grass is a great core you can run. They each cover their weaknesses effectively. Especially with dual typing, you can actually have a lot of support in terms of that. So obviously you can run other water types, but I just kind of came up with Pex because that's the one I used on my team and I think it does great with Regenerator so it can self-sustain itself. And it can spread poison with these big poison moves and it's a water type, so water types are just very valuable. Well, not so much anymore, they lost gold, but that's another topic for another day. In terms of grass types you could support with Skeldiurge, Toad's Cruel is a good one. It's got Spore to spread sleep, it's got Toxic to spread poison, and it also has great support moves with Rapid Spin, especially if you're running the Leftover set, which is weak to hazards. Toad's Cruel's Rapid Spin can really help keep rocks and T specs off the field. And you could also run the knock and also knock off his great and knock off items because if you type in knockoff distribution, the number tank, I think it's less than 20. Yeah, so not a lot of ones have knockoff, so it's a commodity. So, Totsuku, I think, is a great teammate. And Brute Bonnet, I never used Brute Bonnet yet, but I just clicked it quickly because it's a dark type, so it covers the <laughs> ghost and dark weakness of Skeldirge. And it can also spread poison, not poison, it can spread sleep. So that's just a quick analysis of how to use scale damage. Hopefully if I remember to, I'm gonna... So the follow-up would be how to actually use it in battle. The main general game plan with scale damage is that you want to use it to tank. One, you want to use it to stop sweeps, especially physical sweepers that try to do sword dance or dragon dance. Dragon dance. Scale damage could put those mons to a halt with unaware, and it could start spreading burns, it could start spamming torch song, and the Torch Song is really important to spam because it does put opponents on a timer. Because if you let this thing get to plus 3 or plus 4 Torch Song, the game might end. I mean, obviously, if it's if you're faster, you can revenge it, but generally, opponents do not want to let it stack up Torch Song. So, generally, the game plan with Skeldirge, you bring it in on a setup sweeper, stop it. Or you're bringing it on most physical attack, depending on your EV investments, you bring it in on the stronger stat. You wall it, you either burn, or you press torch song, or you make a double switch, but that's can get more complicated. And yeah, hopefully the follow-up, I remember. Okay, this is where I put the video of me talking about skill legion battle. Da -da -da. Man, I really gotta remember to <laughs> save my replays. Okay, so in this battle here, this is just a demonstration of how I to use skill damage effectively. So I just lost my cloud sire. And I let my opponent belly drum. Well, I didn't let him. What? I let my opponent belly drum. He got plus six with belly drum. So obviously, I'm in a very bad position. Avalok dies, Tang Lu dies, Floor just dies, Wu Chen dies. Now, Skeldiurge does not die. And you're going to see why. So, I bring in Skeldiurge. And for this Skeldiurge, I set the type, the Terrestrialized the Ghost. Now, I just want to let you know that if I sent his Terrestrialize to fire, I would have lost because Waterfall is still super effective and I lose. But, as you can see here, I'm going to click Terrestrialize and then I'm going to immediately burn the Zumo. Oh my god, where am I? Yes. Okay, cool. Come on. 
opponent would click, if my opponent would click a move, then we could actually get this. This is where I need to save my replays. There we go. So I turn this into a ghost type. He's gonna go for waterfall, thinking, okay, he's got this. And I still take a lot of damage because obviously Azumaru has terrestrialized, but because of my oven aware, I don't take the 5 billion damage from waterfall. I just take the you know 44% standard is doable. And because I terrestrialize into a ghost type, I don't have to take the super effective damage and I actually live. And at this point, I can. Now, this is obviously is a gamble getting that wisp. If I miss that will o wisp, I lose the game. But I hit it, so that's great. Now, Azumarill's burnt, and now Azumarill's useless. I can just slack off. Oh, if I got flinched as well, that was also game over. But <laughs> so <laughs> lucky I didn't get flinched. But yes, I can just click slack off at that point. And Azumarill has pretty much been neutralized. And this is also great too because. I terrestrialize into a ghost type, Great Tusk also can't touch me. If I was a fire type, it would just click Earthquake, I lose. But because I am a terrestrialized ghost type and I lose my fire typing, I can just immediately burn this. Oh, I mean, the knockoff's gonna hurt a little. I mean, not really. 36%. That's like. Losing my left leftovers kind of sucks, but the burn was worth it. This thing is out of commission, it can't do any damage. And my scale damage can go on, and if I just fast forward, pretty sure I just fast, pretty sure I just whip, uh, here we go, nope, not here, yes, here. So at this point, most of the team knocked out, I'm in neck and neck with the Dunsparce, I can't believe they made this, the Dunsparce, and at this point, I'm a ghost type, so apparently the Dunsparce gets boom burst, which is crazy, oh, 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 yes, apparently the Dunsparce gets boom burst, so the fact that I'm a ghost type means I'm unaffected by boot burst and at this point it has earth power but like I said before, Skeldy Urge, even though it has subpar special defense, the fact that A, it has base 100 HP and B, I'm a ghost type, just pure ghost type with terrestrialize, means that this Dun Dun Spars literally can't touch me. And if you look at the rest of his team, Fluttermane, Fluttermane can't do anything to me. Oh, because I have double hazards up, it probably could. Palma, I don't know what this thing does, but this thing, I don't know what the, I don't know what that move did, but whatever. I tailed it, and at this point, I just won the match. So that's how you want to use Skeldier. You just want to make it as a good. It's a good defensive pivot, but it could also be used as a wall, and it can really just end games if you leave it unchecked. And yeah, so that's how you use, that's how you use Skeldurge. So thank you for watching. I'm going to try to be doing competitive analysis for a lot of Pokemon, you know, got to get the content out there. But yeah, Skeldurge, I had a lot of fun using him for, I think I played five games with him, five games with him so far. It's definitely a very fun one, very tanky. It's a unique take on the defensive wall. And yeah, I'm going to be uploading a lot. And if you like the video, like, comment, subscribe. Click the notification bell if you really want to keep watching. But yeah, later.